one of the things that I saw on your website was that you are studying uh, exosomes in your lab. So could you talk a little bit about what exosomes are and, and what you're studying them for? Yeah, great question. So exosomes are, are a type of particle, and there's a number of things that are released from cells that are particles. They're called extracellular vesicles. It was thought that cells release these vesicles that have DNA, protein, RNA, and lipids, and metabolites, as kind of a way of getting rid of the garbage. They were called the, the garbage can of cells. But it turns out they're not a garbage can. They're actually ways cells communicate. So they release these vesicles carrying signaling molecules, and they'll be taken up by cells at a distance. And so this regulates the immune response. It regulates metabolism. It probably contributes to everything that the body does. And it appears also that senescent cells release certain types of vesicles that have different contents than a non-senescent cell. But where we started to, to look at EVs and aging is the fact we observed that stem cells, so if you have young functional adult stem cells in your body, they release vesicles that function to suppress senescence. So if you add them to senescent cells in culture, they suppress the inflammation, all the inflammatory factors those senescent cells are releasing. So we have now been trying to figure out what components of these vesicles contribute to suppressing senescence. And then how does that suppression of senescence, you know, what's its role during normal human aging? So if you have endogenous stem cells that are releasing these vesicles that suppress senescence, when and how and why are they doing this? Um, we are trying to also use them therapeutically. So if you make enough vesicles from young functional stem cells, that you can then inject them into a mouse and eventually a human, and they should suppress inflammation and senescence. Uh, so they could be used therapeutically. Uh, and I guess the, the, other, the other interesting observation uh, isn't necessarily related to EVs, but it was actually going to step back looking at stem cells. And the question is whether stem cell dysfunction was a consequence of aging or a cause of aging. And we have shown that if you put back young functional stem cells, are young functional stem cell vesicles that you can extend health span in mice. So it means that loss of stem cell function, and one of the, that function is releasing vesicles, that if, that if you lose that activity, that contributes to driving aging, and you can actually restore it to slow aging. So stem cell dysfunction is a cause of aging, and vesicles are one of the pathways or release of these vesicles by stem cells is one of the ways that they function to slow aging. And, and the advantage to them is that unlike a protein that may bind to something on the cell surface, these vesicles can be internalized. So they can deliver DNA, they can deliver RNA, they can deliver small, these uh, small non-coding RNAs called microRNAs. So they can deliver things inside the cell efficiently. So there could be different types of signaling molecules than what you might view as an inflammatory cytokine or something that only binds to the cell surface. These vesicles are internalized, so they function differently than other components, uh, you know, other second messengers that are secreted. I mean, if, if you put young vesicles into a body, then it may send, send signals for them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I think that, you know, the composition of, or, or the, the contribution of these vesicles to all the effects we're seeing in aging is still difficult to, to sort out because they're very heterogeneous. All cells make them. They have a variety of components. So it's been very complicated, but we, we've identified some small RNAs that are carried by these stem cell vesicles that modulate senescence. So we've identified a few of these components within an extracellular vesicle that confers this anti-senescence effect and reduces inflammation. So it's probably one of the mechanisms, or probably a lot of others, but we at least are, you know, have some idea of, of some of the signaling mechanisms that these vesicles use to suppress senescence and inflammation. So when you say suppress senescence, it would be is it like a senomorphic. So it's, a, it's yes. suppressing the SASP. So that's a, a term we coined, senomorphic. It's okay. uh, it doesn't kill a senescent cell, but suppressors markers of senescence, which you know, the concern there is if it was a damaged cell that could become cancer, you know, do you really want to keep that cell around? But it looks like actually many things that suppress senescence don't lead to an increase in cancer. Actually, drugs that suppress senescence but don't kill senescent cells can actually extend health span by delaying onset of cancer. So, so far, we've not seen an increase in cancer by suppressing 
senescence or at least markers of senescence in these damaged cells. And so we think one thing young functional stem cells do is, is keep these senescent cells that the, the burden of those cells is low and they might even suppress cancer by modulating these damaged senescent cells. Thank you.